Anyway, okay. So welcome everybody. My name is uh, Muhammad Atiku Rahman Ahad. Uh, I'm from University of Dhaka. At this moment, uh, I'm working at Osaka University. Uh, so this is a lecture series uh, uh, in Bangla. As you can see at the top is Gobeshonar Tore Adda, which means that uh, just uh, brainstorming or gossiping for research. So uh, this topic I selected, uh, even though I'm not an expert that much, but I selected because I found that lots of young researchers, they have many questions about uh, uh, different topics on computer vision. And most of our young researchers, they engage on trivial issues or less challenging topics, even though they are giving lots of their efforts, but it is better that they try on something uh, which has a future and uh, challenging something. So that's why I uh, try to prepare as much as possible. It's very difficult and most of the items I don't know. Uh, it's not possible to know. My main uh, research areas are uh, uh, human activity recognition uh, related uh, to computer vision and sensors. So, but still there are lots of topics and I hope that we know some of the topics and then you can share your ideas and comments so that uh, through this process, we can um, learn from each other. And this is just like a discussion and brainstorming. So this is, uh, uh, we started uh, for the 10th ICIV conference and fifth uh, international conference and imaging vision and pattern recognition series, we call it. And with that, we'll have series of lectures uh, uh, from different experts from the, all over the world. So with that, I thank you all. Uh, for uh, joining and we hope that we'll enjoy uh, the discussion. So the agenda is that I'll share some topics, <clears throat> mainly trending topics and for future challenges. Uh, these are basically based on top conferences like IEEE, CVPR uh, and related and IEEE transaction PAMI and few others. In the second part, I hope that uh, we'll share each other, our topics, what we are doing, what kind of topics you are exploring and so on. And no work is small and no question is silly. So don't feel shy to ask any questions or share that I'm doing this or that and so on. So just to give an idea that, I mean, we know that the uh, top uh, conference in computer vision and pattern recognition is called CVPR. And uh, you know that the main conference they accept about uh, 13, 1400 papers last year, uh, this year, uh, and uh, from 6,000 plus papers. And all papers are full papers, like, I mean, eight to 10 pages, double columns. So if you consider single column, like 20 pages. And with big conferences like CVPR or ICCV, they have some satellite workshops before the one or two days in the conference and after the main conference, like three, four days, they have workshops, tutorials. So, do you have any idea how many workshops there will be and there were in 2019 only at CVPR? Uh, it is very much surprising that there were 86 workshops. Workshops means uh, not like, I mean, uh, uh, in, in many countries or especially in Bangladesh, workshop means two hours, some discussion, some training, these things we call workshop, but basically uh, in top, conferences, they have satellite workshops where they are um, uh, organizing very similar to conference uh, on a con very concentrated area where papers are collected, reviewed, accepted and rejected as like the main conference, of course, a little bit weaker uh, than the main conference. They have invited keynote speakers, panel discussions. Sometimes they organize challenges. For example, in 2019 at CVPR, they had 19 challenges or competitions uh, by top groups. And usually the duration is half a day or full day. And uh, I mean, conferences are very excellent uh, forums. Uh, so that we can get very concentrated areas. So from that, well, I uh, computed some of the, uh, most of the slides. Now look at here, just slides are basically here based on different, different activities. So you can find that, I mean, uh, I don't know any Bangladeshi uh, young authors who worked on marine video for environmental monitoring. 
Uh, we know that, I mean, video processing, uh, just we have cameras, we take human movements or car movements, and then we go for some kind of processing and we do some research. But see, marine data is different. And it's not been uh, doing for many years. Uh, it's so uh, marine video for environmental monitoring is a, a new and recent topic, basically. And it's still very few works have been done. Like if you consider CBPR 18, the workshop, they had only four papers four accepted papers. It means that reasonable quality four papers only. And in next year they organized and only three papers, but they create a new forum. So that's why I'm mentioning here that if you consider underwater display or image, definitely we have low contrast levels. The visibility range is very poor and definitely harder to localize and classify uh, marine animals. So you can see that there are different kinds of, I mean, uh, uh, situations that underwater, it's very difficult and the scale varies dramatically. So it's not like what we do in daily life, like uh, you can recognize a bird, but it's not so easy to recognize, I mean, uh, a fish or another thing. The next one, uh, if you look at this here, that the cluttered background, various scales of the same kind of animals and low visibility sometimes, and you cannot differentiate whether this is a fish or some algae or something. And there are lots of challenges. And if you look at the cases, like we know that computer vision becomes very hard nowadays because of, I mean, uh, we have, uh, um, uh, I should say that uh, data sets are very large. So without deep learning, without uh, GPUs, uh, image recognition and human activity recognition, tracking, it becomes uh, impossible to work on. But if you look at here, that only 508 images and it's a data set on marine world. So if you work on that area, then you can challenge something new area, even if uh, uh, you don't have uh, high competing facilities, but still you can uh, penetrate and do some good results and contribute something. This is another data set, marine aerial data set, only, I mean, less than 300 images. And we know the challenges are scale difference, ripples in the water, water color and underwater rocks, streams, view angle. So these are the challenges. So if we uh, need to work, we can go into this kind of uh, problems as well. Now, uh, there is uh, one work by King uh, in CBPR workshop in 18, that segmentation of underwater coral leaf images. So there is a data set on coral leaf and then they want to segment those and it has 10 classes only. We know that nowadays human activity recognition, we have hundreds of classes. I'll sh sh uh, show you soon, but here are less than thousand images, images only not even video and 10 classes. And this is stingray detection uh, from aerial image and also not so much. So this is one important thing. So you can see that, I mean, uh, there are something. And another point is that when there are scarcity of data sets, you can generate a new data set and that becomes a huge contribution to the community and good work. So for example, uh, this is a brackish data set. They have only six different classes. And, the, and, uh, uh, and from Alborg University, Denmark. And you see that they just uh, put a box and three cameras with three lighting and so on. And here you can see the different kinds of data sets related to underwater image data set. Then another area uh, I never found uh, among my peers that they are working, which is called uh, egocentric camera egocentric perception, interactions and competing. Egocentric means like ego. Ego means we know that we have ego. We don't need to have ego, but we have. And egocentric, that means first person self. So if I have camera, uh, in the next slide you can uh, see, I, I'll show you. So uh, that the camera is, is within me, within my body. So from my body, I can uh, to check my hand or something. So egocentric means first person camera. And already there, I mean, more than uh, the last one was held in ECCV, European Conference and Computer Vision, seven times, EPIC Kitchen's 100 data set. And if you see here that hundreds of hours of recording, six challenges were organized under this workshop. 
And those are action recognition, action detection, action anticipation, what will happen next in the future. These are the new thing. Domain adaptation for action recognition, multi-instance retrieval. Now, uh, I recommend that our students and young researchers that you must participate different challenges so that uh, you can uh, have a deadline you can try on a new and challenging data set and through this process you can improve yourself and also when you do you look at the past results or papers on that uh, challenge in the last previous year and the previous year so that you can learn and do the best now have a look uh, this is a video uh, from where uh, you can see that uh, egocentric camera that means the camera is overhead my head or my uh, chin or uh, I mean uh, on my neck so I whatever I'm doing those things are recorded so it's not that another camera someone else is not seeing I'm seeing not my eyes but another thing so um, this is egocentric camera so the camera or sensors are located uh, either here or here and then whatever we do these are I mean uh, recorded as a video and this kind of egocentric camera movement can determine hand or wrist movement and have huge applications especially paralyzed cases or rehabilitation stages or elderly people support like you work at home and you are trying to do something you have a camera if in future the system can automatically understand what are you doing what are the things you are doing so it can help you for safety it can guide you that please do this or that and that for example dementia you know that dementia is a disease it is a common disease for elderly people as we grow older we forget many things so Okay, egocentric camera can help a lot. So next one is that action recognition. So uh, if you see that they have action recognition, so what is the purpose? Action recognition means that we have different videos. Each video is an action and we want to recognize that action. So usually one action means one video, just like movie scene, like cut and then another scene and another scene something that we call it trimmed or cut segment but in real life we'll see later on that our life we do one action then another action then another action so we don't have any trimmed or cut segment but anyway most of the action recognition are done based on this kind of one action one video but still it is uh, difficult when the number of classes are huge so action recognition uh, even i have a couple of i mean <laughs> books uh, on action recognition it means that there are i mean several thousand papers on action recognition only and a few hundred uh, data sets from smaller to larger and here by, by assigning a verb verb means like i mean what the person is doing and noun means the object itself and with that we try to recognize action and so on so action recognition has many applications we know that video surveillance and uh, hospital or rehabilitation center entertainment uh, crowded scene it is very difficult but it's still work uh, going on sports video analysis we know that how much efforts are giving uh, for sports analysis because they have huge amount of money and then they can do action understanding by robot because uh, robot if a small robot can understand something it can help human being now there are different categories on video action recognition that rgb based that means from the video rgb image or we can get skeleton data skeleton means body joint points so you can say that each joint has x y z uh, this data rgb or depth based or depth only image and most of the cases i mentioned are that segmented classes streamed cut one action has one video but we need in real life temporal segmentation or recognition where continuous sequences are needed and real time is extremely difficult because of a huge amount of data processing and so on so all of the work so far almost all are offline action detection is another important part we want to detect the starting time and the end time of an uh, on an untrimmed or continuous video 
and then we'll see that okay this is this action with this object something like this so this is uh, i mean not an old work action detection has been i um, mean seriously uh, going on for the last uh, few years only so action detection is very very important but very difficult task as well because you are doing from continuous action and you have to cut uh, from one point to another. So these are, the, uh, I mean, another area. Action anticipation or prediction, which is <laughs> extremely difficult. This is futuristic, but uh, uh, that's why the scopes are very high because not so much work has been done. So we can check that uh, action prediction based on the present condition or the past condition can we predict the future action for example in this data set uh, the ground truth is get tomato like this is observed that the video has this information after that you can tell that okay the person will check the tomato because uh, preparing salad i think this is avocado uh, I enjoyed avocado today. And then, uh, for example, here doing something and the next section is the put the glass. But it is extremely difficult because uh, when we do something, there are lots of different possibilities uh, we can do. But it's still, this work is going on for the last couple of years. Uh, and you can check that. I mean, uh, this is a very, very important research area, uh, especially for surveillance, elderly support system and uh, security and so on another is unsupervised i mean this is very difficult but if anyone uh, is uh, willing to work you can go for the epic kitchen uh, uh, and then find more multi-instance retrieval this is basically video to text and text to video based but i'm giving these are difficult as well um, and normally the training data has a trimmed action segment each annotated with the caption so each video has a caption and based on this i mean you have to uh, work on so what about the future so uh, the future uh, if you look at this uh, uh, video or if you just google search epic epic at cbpa 2020 you can find that they have a video for 30 minutes uh, discussion on future directions for egocentric vision. That's why workshops are very important that they, dis they have the scopes to discuss future directions and open discussions and what is missing and so on. So I recommend that you Google search and enjoy the talk. The next another topic is, uh, I mean, uh, which is um, uh, ignored as well, visual question answering and dialogue. So this is uh, like visual question answering, visual dialogue, uh, and uh, there are some challenges as well. We know that uh, we have chat systems and uh, it helps a lot, but what about based on the visual, like what is the mustache made of? Uh, AI system will uh, call it, it's a banana. And for example, uh, uh, the, the chatting system, there are two zebras and then, uh, or zebra uh, basically, and then uh, they are discussing and from the video, they are getting the information. So these kind of works are going on and these are related to vision and language uh, as well. So um, uh, another domain. We know that AR means augmented reality, VR means virtual reality. Another term is called mixed reality. These kind of things are going on in the community for more than 30 years. And we have AR, VR systems or mixed reality headsets. Uh, but uh, what can we do? Like if someone wants uh, visiting from uh, uh, USA or Japan and uh, they say that I want to buy a gift for you, you can say that, okay, buy uh, something uh, like this so that I can do some research not for games so uh, these kind of systems have different applications including eye tracking and helping and so on mixed reality headsets such as Microsoft uh, uh, they have HoloLens which is I mean very cheap <laughs> not so cheap I mean uh, you see that it's very expensive as well so I mean uh, you cannot have this kind of gift or you shouldn't have this kind of gift better you ask uh, the GPU and then try different things but AR or VR or mixed reality has lots of applications especially in uh, surgery cases remote surgery and others you can explore a lot by the way, if you want to know more what is going on, you just Google search and you find that this term, these workshops are, 
under CBPR or ICCB or ECCB and you can get the latest update on the works. Another area is we know that we recognize different objects and object recognition, image recognition becomes uh, extremely successful, especially in the last few years. Uh, but what about fine grained visual categorization? So this workshop is going on at CBPR and elsewhere for the last seven years. So fine grained means, fine grained we understand that, I mean, a uh, very minute level, like subordinate, subordinate categorization, uh, which is uh, termed as in psychology, according to their website, I have no idea on psychology, but the plan is that would we want to know the fine distinction into species like animals and plants, car, motorcycle models, architectural styles, and so on. And these kind of, I mean, fine distinctions uh, are very important for futuristics uh, to understand uh, human performance and behavior and so on. And there are, you'll, it is surprising that there are six competitions uh, uh, of, under the fine grain visual categorization. So it is object recognition, but it has, I mean, different areas. Now have a look. I'm not sure if anybody worked on these kind of things, you tell me after, uh, during the discussion, that we know that camera traps, like if you watch, I mean, different uh, uh, animal kingdom or nature related uh, uh, documentaries, you know that they put different kinds of camera traps inside the forest or underwater, and then they collect biological data. Biologists study animals in the wild. Uh, through this process. So, uh, I mean, and those data sets are very difficult because you have huge varieties of data and uh, from those data you want to recognize automatically using computer vision technologies and so on. So just have a look, for example, this is a data set from multiple modalities like camera traps, citizen scientists. Citizen scientists means that we common people, we share data. Another one is uh, you collect remote sensing data. Now, uh, if you look at the tiger, it has different uh, locations, different distance, and sometimes in the middle, I even I cannot, as a human being, cannot see the tiger inside. Uh, and if you look here, that the difference is like illumination variations. At night, you don't get that much information. Sometimes it's in the darker location. Blur image, a uh, region of interest is very small. Like, I mean, sometimes it's far or uh, in the bush, you cannot see the pro it properly. And occlusions are there, camouflage. We know that and perspective sometimes the animal is so close to the camera and you get some information from where you cannot properly understand so from this kind of challenging data set or data how can you find solutions and there are lots of scopes and nothing has been done another one is called plant pathology and uh, it has uh, about, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, 4,000 high quality data. Uh, and basically from uh, uh, apple uh, foliage uh, diseases uh, under variable illumination, angle, surface, noise conditions, and expert annotated, I mean expert persons like agriculturists, he or she annotated or confirmed that this uh, is this disease, this disease, or this kind of problem, and so on. I know that in Bangladesh, we have similar, a good number of similar works on rice or similar other other things, tomato and so on. But the point is that what they are missing that the data are usually not expert annotated, number one. Number two, the diversity is not that much. So that's why it is important. You can have a look. This is not a big data set according to my perception, but you can have a look and see that whether those who are working on rice uh, diseases and other diseases in Bangladesh or other countries, why don't you try this global competition? And you don't know that you can be a winner. So uh, these are the few things like another is that semi-supervised fine grain recognition challenge and herbarium. We know that herbarium means like different kinds of, I mean, uh, uh, plant species uh, we want to understand. This is a bit large data set of 1 million images and um, I mean 32,000 plant species and so on. Another one is that eye material fashion. 
like you have different kinds of uh, dress codes and uh, you want to extract each individual parts uh, separately. So this is another uh, data set to work on. Another one is Metropolitan Museum of Art in US, uh, I think in New York, uh, they call it MET. So uh, over there, they collected different kinds of arts and then uh, to recognize. Now we look into the activity net. To me, this is the largest uh, challenge or the most difficult challenge in computer vision because uh, the data sets are enormously large and activity net uh, I mean came uh, I mean five years back at CVPR and since then they uh, I mean almost revolution I mean uh, there is a revolution you can say that in terms of uh, uh, activity recognition now where do we get so many videos I mean, when there was no YouTube, no internet, it was very difficult to get videos. Now, internet videos, TV channels, surveillance videos from different cameras, car cameras, even personal cameras, because I mentioned that egocentric cameras and so on. And then see what kind of challenges uh, they introduce so that uh, researchers can work. So uh, number one, you can say the temporal action localization activity net which means that from untrimmed or uncut continuous video sequence, you need to temporally, temporal means, spatial means X, Y, the pixel va values you can say or space, temporal means time series data. So temporally localize activities, which was epic, one of the EPIC uh, competitions as well. But uh, the activity net groups uh, with CBPR, they have the largest one. So videos can contain more than one activity and, multi, uh, and multiple activity categories can appear in the video. And you see the data sets like, I mean, <laughs> 200 classes, that's fine. But I mean, how many hours of untrimmed videos and more than 20,000 videos they collected. But uh, the frame per second is only five. Usually we have 30 frame per second, but they made it like that. What are the applications? Because in real life actions, these are not cut we have continuous sections. So uh, first, that's why we have lots of uh, opportunities to work, but they're very difficult. If you do not have uh, GPUs, you don't think to work on temporal action localization like that. Another one is uh, dense captioning events like detecting and describing the events. For example, if you look at the video scenes, we can look that the person is playing piano but like me, most of the people don't just look at the person uh, playing piano. We look at another person, another person behind this, and maybe someone is dancing, someone is doing something else and so on. So can we detect every individual action and describe them? So they created a data set and uh, this uh, is another big challenge. Another one is called activity net entities object localization. So, uh, I mean, you have to localize action and see that the ground truth says that this man is watching TV on a couch next to a table. But after recognition, you have to recognize the man watching TV, sitting on a couch or sofa and next to a table and so on. But in real life, I mean, of course uh, it is difficult, but based on the ground truth, they try to, uh, I mean, localize different actions and sometimes they miss and so on. So you can search and uh, so get a trimmed activity recognition. So this is from kinetics. Kinetics is a data set. Uh, initially it had 400 classes, then 600 and this year they introduced 700 different classes, very large one, but it says one class per video typical human activity recognition most of the cases now in this case i mean sequentially they do and you have to and each data set has 10 seconds and so on uh, so recent trend is generate i mean uh, from the kinetics 400 data set generate skeleton data by using open post from video and make large data set because we will see later on that skeleton data data set are not so large number of classes are very small uh, and so on so large data sets so if you see that i mean uh, in the past if you see that we had like 20 years before only six actions eight actions nine actions 11 actions so Today, if any researcher works on small data sets like this, 
you can never publish in top journals or mid-level journals or mid-level conferences usually because uh, nowadays in the last five seven years we have this amount of 600 classes 700 classes 80 classes and so on even youtube 8 million data set has i mean almost 4000 so you see the number of classes are increasing massively and that's why the video and uh, i mean we are lucky that we have youtube and from those we can get this kind of data sets Another one I mentioned previously, AVHA. AVHA is, uh, means uh, Atomic Visual Action Dataset. So each dataset has different things. So if you look at the video, three persons, they are doing three different things. And AVHA is uh, such a dataset where spatiotemporal action are localized in space and time where multiple subjects and potentially multiple actions are there. And each video is 15 minutes video. So you can understand that from the movie scenes, real life, 15 minutes video each one, and you have to identify the subjects and actions. Extremely difficult work, but I mean, uh, you can try, of course. This is another one, activity detection in extended videos. Uh, here also localization temporarily localized uh, in different activities and so on. Uh, the purpose is basically multi-camera system and for forensic and real-time alerting applications. Uh, another one is from untrimmed videos and they have one challenge on supervised learning, weekly supervised learning and so on. This is another one, how to 100 million data set. So if you look at here that they have video clips with captions you see that so many videos, they have captions. So uh, we know that, I mean, sometimes we have video, we have captions like narrative captions, how to cook biryani, for example, okay? So we are preparing some biryani or repairing something. We know that in through augmented reality, uh, remotely, we can do surgery. Remotely, we can repair uh, a car. Of course, not so much per perfection, but it's going on and here, 23,000 activities are there. And the goal is that real time, almost impossible uh, so far, natural language search on how to uh, uh, 100 million data set and so on. So this is another different domain, not typical human action recognition that I have been doing, uh, but something more. And if you see that the diversity of the data sets are so much, and this is another important thing that some of my students, they worked on uh, for some uh, global competitions uh, challenge, uh, similar to these kind of challenges. And when we participated, all students always complains are data imbalance, like some of the cases, actions have many data, sometimes they have no data, only a few. How to do it? But it's a natural thing in life. Some works we do a lot, some works we do, do much less. So that's why the number of verbs and number of nouns, you can see the top 120 only are like this. So, and there are many other works, uh, activities where number of samples are very little and you have to find a solution when there are huge amount of data imbalance and still you can, uh, I mean, uh, uh, recognize uh, properly or smartly. Now, so far we have shown only video RGB data, but what about skeleton based data or depth data, sensor data? Those sensor is not uh, related to computer vision, but sensor data is also related to these kind of applications. So what about like similar trends means like uh, we saw that human action recognition. Yes, video based done, skeleton based, there are data sets and working on. But we saw that in the video temporal action segmentation, we saw that multiple actions, multiple persons in the same scene, we saw that language is involved or, or captioning. What about skeleton data? When we create a skeleton data, can we do temporal segmentation? Do we have any work? I mean, one of my, basically two groups, they are now trying for last one month, they are studying and trying to think this kind Kind of uh, uh, works but there is no work and when they will do something and if they can do something that will be an excellent work so that's why for future challenges especially on a skeleton based in vision domain we can think that if 
one domain has progressed a lot but another related domain is not so much progressing you think that whether the less i mean explored areas can be explored similar to the progressive domain and so on this way we can try to generate new research area or improve the community and of course uh, be a leader of the, in this community not so easy but if we try hopefully we can do excellent and another good point is that when you go for a skeleton or depth or sensor and you start you are a beginner or one of the earliest researchers on that case data set is smaller so if you are from a, poor, a technologically poor country or your country doesn't support much about finance for research on that case you can run on simple pc or google collab and try to do something so these are the opportunities not to look at, I mean, uh, existing continued high profile work, but create something similar. So with that, I am saying that is skeleton based human activity recognition. There are more than 80 data sets, but similar to the 10 years before of video domain, mostly smaller data sets. Kinect version two, version one, and now we have the Azure, basically few classes, and they work basically handcrafted features. But recently, last few years, uh, NTU, uh, from Singapore, they introduced 60 data sets and just this month, IEEE Transaction PAMI, they published uh, the paper of NTU 120 benchmark data sets that they have 120 different classes and 60 classes. So you see that, I mean, and multi-view. So these are the large data sets. And OpenPose has been explored on the Kinect 400 data set to three, three years before 2018, 19, and this year uh, uh, from some Chinese researchers. And this is a very interesting idea because we know that if you use open pose or similar methods from an image, that means video, you can get the skeleton points. So if you do not have large data set, because it is very difficult to make large data set, you need many people set up lots of activity. 120 actions means if one subject, one person must act 120 different kinds of activities which is very difficult to do unless you pay a lot and well organized uh, a theme is required but if you have kinetics 400 or other video based action recognition data set then run open pose extract the skeleton body joint points and then make a data set so this is another one motion capture based systems are there and we have a skeleton data set based on motion capture system and if the data sets are larger you know deep learning is the only option to work and get results then I move to the gate recognition. We know that gate is a um, standard biometrics nowadays. It is established already. Biometrics means fingerprint. We know that fingerprint is a biometrics. Iris recognition is a biometrics. Face recognition and biometrics means that from this image or from these kind of images, one can recognize the person you can identify the person you can tell that okay this is ahad this is korim this is rohim this is jodu and mudhu so gate by gate gate means the walking pattern how a person works based on this we can recognize people and there are lots of applications in surveillance healthcare especially in medical and rehabilitation my university at osaka university in our lab we have a good amount of works going on behind the scene uh, based on gate and related features on medical and rehabilitation and so on for forensic applications and especially for criminal investigation you will be surprised to know that in china uh, witrex and japan especially from our labs work several years ago i mean criminal investigation government approved that gate walking pattern but of course only based on walking pattern you cannot catch a criminal from the video you need some more other uh, information and then uh, the gate can be in uh, another attributes because gate is taken from far this is the plus point for fingerprint i need to touch the sensor for eyes or face, I need to be closer to the camera, but for gate that I'm walking far from the camera, but still you can get the surveillance camera can collect the video. And from that video, you can analyze and find that whether I am one of those persons or so on. And gate has applications like age, 
or gender classification that you can understand the age of a person and you can say that why the hell i need to know the age of a person look at the commercialization you go to a shopping center you are climbing the uh, escalator uh, or in the elevator and based on your face or if you walk somewhere based on your walking pattern if they can understand whether you are male or female it is relatively easier but if they can understand that age range that you are younger you are a child you are uh, in a middle aged person or uh, elderly person or something based on this they can put advertisement in front of you and in korea they did it in japan and other countries they are exploring this kind of information for business purposes it's so easy so that's why age and gender identification is also possible from the gate recognition however in large scale gate recognition is difficult because normally gate recognition is done that a one person is walking the camera is seeing and then recognizing the person's movement but when we have clothing like lungi shari or uh, different kinds of things you cannot even see the i mean leg information uh, how can you understand the walking patterns and then view angles for example because different angles the same person looks uh, get, you can get data different things carried object when we have carried object we have extra information and the, see the guy, guy is already bent uh, okay after shopping so much for his uh, probably wife or i don't know or his family and then you see that i mean on that time when you have luggage your walking pattern is different and occlusions because you uh, if you are you leg uh, our walking pattern is occluded partially by different objects as some things are missing so you cannot get enough information another important area so these areas you can work a lot definitely difficult and there is no data set which is, I mean, no data set on clothing, view angles, carried object occlusions, large data sets, almost zero. Our lab, we have some data sets, but no occlusion data sets. We have 14 different view angles. We have carried objects, clothing, but most many cases, they don't open the data set unless and until they do some good work and publish, and or sometimes they do uh, other things, a business purpose and so on. Early detection of gait disorders, may provide a safer living for elderly which is another very important things that elderly people we have gait disorders walking problem and uh, after covid for example or chikungunya or dengue after different kinds of diseases including myself i still face problem while walking if i stay on my chair for one hour or two hours and then i stand up i feel that due to my chikungunya uh, problem i have walking pattern problem my left leg is not moving that much so that's why if we can recognize then it can be useful for elderly for different kinds of safer living we can suggest that okay don't go outside like this way or take this cane or walk like this and so on and patients and rehabilitations and i'll give some more examples later on that uh, this is very important and we have some works as well but i'm not mentioning those here so try on normal as well as abnormal cases to get better results here is one example from uh, uh, it's uh, from spain in it a lower abnormality gate data set uh, if you work uh, for vision uh, sometimes uh, it is better that you consider a challenge look into the hospital related rehabilitation related data set discuss with the doctor then see whether your motion information instead of making it a regular motion you can with the consultation of a doctor you can get some idea that uh, you collect different kinds of data and abnormal data either gait or movement or uh, doing something and that can be more useful you can create a new research domain so gait styles are different and they tried with different like if uh, my, my one hand is locked or paralyzed my one hand cannot be moved definitely my walking pattern is different so they tried in different ways and then they recognized and so on another very important research area is called paralyzed patients or hemiplegic patients their posture analysis or that they are walking pattern analysis uh, uh, this is uh, i mean uh, we are working i have few groups uh, working and uh, we, uh, with hospital and uh, some uh, industry they want to make a system just think about that 
even in America, even in Japan, we have much less therapists, much less doctors than more patients. And as we live longer, so automatically elderly people will uh, increase. This is natural thing. And we become elderly, we become older, and definitely we face real life problems, natural problems. And we have more accidents, more stroke patients nowadays. Now, after that, what will happen that we have partially paralyzed or we had gait problem and then we go through rehabilitation experts or therapists check and based on this you evaluate during COVID-19 or this kind of pandemic people cannot go to the hospital because if I mean an elderly person enters the hospital more chances to get I mean uh, affected and uh, trouble can we do something that automatically and for that purpose you don't need deep learning you need a small data set, only five or 10 different kinds of actions, consult with the doctor, get the original evaluation idea, like SIA's value or other values, and then you try to recognize from simple video actions like raising hand, raising legs, standing and sitting, walking a bit, uh, moving around a circle, uh, rotating some body parts, and then see whether from those simple video, automatically you can give some kind of scoring instead of the doctor or therapist your algorithm will determine these kind of things and help the patients to know the real situation whether the rehabilitation patient is improving slowly or not and based on this doctor can help and so on so this is extremely extremely important those who are young now think about your parents or think about me <laughs> and then do some good work so that after uh, 20, 30 years, we can get the benefit from your work. This is uh, the work that how to study the progress of the gate. For example, normal gate versus action or versus problem. Action quality, which I mentioned, oh, I didn't mention it. Action quality is important. How to evaluate or score the progress of any development for months without visiting the therapist frequently. So for example, this is a gait of hemiplegic patient and see the walking pattern, one leg is fine, the another leg is duck footed partially and so on. And we have millions of cases all over the world. We need solutions, but can we do based on video or is skeleton based? No sensors because patients do not like to wear uh, sensors, but still you can try with sensors because for our safety, we want to, we take injections, we have surgeries, we get suffer pain. So maybe if send some sensors on my foot or hand, you attach and get some data. And if you make smart algorithm, because make sure that this kind of cases, the changes or movements are very tiny. Differences are very little. So slow progress and minute differences. So think whether a skeleton data can be more helpful or RGB data or some kind of sensors. And then work with small data and you don't need a huge computation capacity. You don't need big data set, but you need genuine data set based on the patients. And of course, with the approval of an ethical committee and approval of the doctors and patients and so on, so that your work and your data set can be more useful and can be publishable in top journals and so on. If you do not take approval, then I mean, uh, you can publish only in, I mean, uh, weak journals or conferences, not in good places. So a great scope to work. Then another area is called <laughs> uh, related to future. We always look into the future uh, and some people look into the future too much, which is not good, but for research, precognition, this is an English term there. It's not a mistake, by the way. Precognition means knowledge of a future event or future vision. So can we make some system, vision-based system that can forecast the future, forecasting means future, or predict. So to unlock human-like capacities in machines and robots, because we the human being based, seeing something, we can understand what, most of the cases, what will be the next action. Okay, I have a cup mug of, I mean, coffee. And then if uh, during the presentation, uh, you don't see me, but uh, I took the coffee and then 
I drink. Even if you didn't see me, you thought that based on the pause, I'm drinking. So, and I'll drink and so on. So uh, machines or robots, they also need to understand. And so that, I mean, they can help people. So early event prediction, activity forecasting, multi-agent forecasting, human behavior prediction is very important. Human phase aging prediction. See, you can say that why the hell I need to, uh, I mean, predict the age of a person. It is important because you want to catch a criminal. The criminal uh, is lost, but you have a photo of 10 years before. And now, if you have a system by which it is also important for face recognition, also gait recognition. In our lab, they are also working that future age, like now my age is say 25, just think, okay? And then, uh, and I, I, I'm lost or I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a criminal and totally uh, disappeared. Now, after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, if what will be my structure, walking patterns, gait will be the same and my face with aging, what will happen? So these kind of predictions are evaluated nowadays, especially deep learning gave us this scope and people are working on that. So that if you find a photo after 20 years, huge chance that you can, I mean, catch me, uh, I mean, uh, even if I'm, uh, uh, I was lost for 20 years and so on. Uh, anticipation of trajectory, short or long-term prediction and diagnosis in medical imaging. Autonomous driving, there are lots of issues and there are issues that you can introduce on data sets or benchmark. Uh, I have no idea, but uh, you can think and uh, uh, proceed on. I just gave, uh, today I just look into some of the IEEE transaction PAMI uh, 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 journals, uh, which is the number one journals uh, in uh, on uh, pattern analysis and machine intelligence. Uh, so, uh, and uh, frankly speaking, I have no paper at PAMI, which is very sad. So they have uh, lots of different areas like uh, RGBD vision, like depth or RG vision based, depth estimate tracking, scene understanding, segmentation, semantic segmentation, object detection, recognition, and face recognition, facial expression recognition. Works are going on for many years, lots of progresses and lots of developments, but based on those, we can go for different new, new applications, especially in COVID era. Like if you see me, if you see my face, can you understand from the video scenes during lectures or other things, how much depressed I am. It is extremely difficult how much angry I am. Can you understand that if there is a video lecture automatically, see if there is a lecture, 100 students are in, uh, uh, in the scene, you have data for one hour for 100 students, you can automatically understand that how good your lecture is based on the facial expression of the students uh, uh, throughout the time, but it's not so easy, okay? So that's why it is important uh, to do lots of research and uh, huge applications healthcare related can be done, uh, especially or through telemedicine or, or I mean uh, other issues. Action recognition papers are there, skeleton based, surface geometry, and biometric recognition. I mentioned fingerprint, gait, but recently, I mean, just two months before, there is another paper uh, from uh, Hong Kong. Yeah, Hong Kong. Uh, uh, fing finger knuckle patterns. So we have finger knuckles, uh, okay? And then based on this, <laughs> can you recognize whether this is Ahad or another person? So this is uh, this research has been going on very little, even 10 years before, but uh, at PAMI this year, this is published. So just think about that, that, I mean, even though this kind of small works, there are only a few works uh, in the past, but I mean, uh, one group, uh, very smart, uh, he's an IEEE fellow, uh, and he uh, introduced this work and published it at PAMI. Person re-identification related to biometrics and gait, defocus blur detection, pose estimation, uh, and landmark localization, saliency, clustering, and many, many aspects of pattern recognition, machine learning, and imaging are published in PAMI and so on. 
Now I'll show you more that the 3D scene understanding for vision, graphics, and robotics. Scene understanding, there are a good amount. You see that six different uh, workshops only at CBPR 2019 related to scene understanding, reconstruction, generation, and so on. Difficult areas, uh, you need lots of graphics knowledge and uh, others, but uh, interesting work as well. Detection in the wild challenge workshop, language and vision, which I mentioned before, automated driving related works are going on uh, a lot. So you see that there are four, I mean, uh, workshops only on, I mean, driving related. Uh, actually, not four, six, basically, because they have semantic visual navigation and autometry and so on. Medical imaging, there are lots of works. I mean, uh, uh, some students, they ask sometimes that uh, I want to work on MRI. I want to work on CT scan. But remember, if you are from a developing country and if you do not have a, a good competing facility, then don't try on those issues unless your data is very different and very small. Uh, because nowadays, medical imaging, huge data sets are used. So if we try smaller data sets, then those papers will not be published in good journals or conferences. Of course, you can learn something on a small data set, but if you consider good publications, which it will be difficult. So you can see that there are different, different, I mean, workshops and so on, on this area. Now, another very important area. We love to say that, love the beauty of nature, save the world, green energy, and so on. Whether there is anything on image and computer vision, see, the more we use internet, the more we use energy, simple. The more you browse the mobile phone, it, and you recharge, basically you are consuming more electricity. So if we don't use unnecessary uh, electricity, then basically we are contributing to the world. This is in different way. Now, in terms of research, low power computer vision challenge. It, it, it was initially until last year, it was low power image recognition, but this year they converted the name to low power computer vision challenge. The purpose is that we want to make energy efficient computer vision technologies so that it can be uh, useful for different applications. Now see that what they did. They introduced some of the tracks or com challenges like FPGA track that running some of the vision based uh, I mean program on FPGA and to see how fast they can uh, one group run this kind of challenge uh, you can explore DSP track is another one uh, object recognition track is another one why where they mentioned that interactive object detection on cocoa detection models operating at 30 millisecond per image on a smartphone similarly uh, image tracking real-time image classification on smartphone so this kind of another one is PyTorch video tracking where think we are using uav unmanned uh, different kinds of uh, aerial vehicles okay and we are happy with that we buy or we make we fly and uh, we i mean we fly that oh we did excellent thing but basically think something different you capture video you collect data from the top from those videos, you can you recognize or can you do the processing within the UAV with low energy capacity so that, uh, I mean, it can be useful, it can do something more, okay? So recognize English letters or numbers in the science in a video captured by the UAV, this was the competition, but you can try different, different smaller applications, I mean, uh, challenges at home uh, uh, from this kind of video capture data and publish good work or even uh, make nice data sets and go for challenges and so on. Now, uh, Professor Ha, Yes, his name is Ha from Korea, uh, uh, ITPLE fellow, uh, Seoul National University. He, in his keynote speech, what he mentioned, he mentioned that basically there are three approaches. What we do for energy efficiency uh, for computer vision algorithms based on CNN. Number one, we try to make the algorithm better uh, so that uh, or smarter so that it can be real time and small resources it can run. Another one is that we develop the hardware but we, uh, it is uh, not uh, basically uh, done easily unless industry is involved. Another one is that software optimization techniques, so we try different kinds of, but he introduced in his talk that algorithm, software and hardware co-design. I don't know what, how he did it, 
if you want to know more about this, then you can read his paper. But I, as I mentioned that energy efficiency is very important. And if we can make this kind of things, uh, we can say so some, some of the students, they have uh, eagerness to work on the environment. A computer vision scientist and computer scientist, algorithm designer, electronic engineer can do on image processing, computer vision arena uh, by uh, doing a smart algorithms and so on and make energy efficient devices, I mean, uh, systems and algorithms. Uh, but, but landmark recognition, multi-target, multi-camera tracking, which is very important. Tracking done, very simple tracking, those days are gone. Nowadays, the tracking are done on very difficult and real life situations and multi-target, multi-camera situations we can see and crowded scene and so on. Biometrics, uh, this workshop, IEEE Biometrics workshop is going on for 15 years and uh, you can enjoy uh, in the future. Uh, I attended this year as well and uh, it's very nice. Uh, see, uh, I mean, forensics, sports, there are many and plant phenotyping. If you love agriculture like me, okay, then go for aggravation. It, the purpose of aggravation that, I mean, yes, for Bangladesh, <laughs> you can say, or for India, you can say that we don't need because we have lots of farmers and they are extremely poor. Why the, uh, why do I need aggravation that much? But uh, we do research for learning. We do research to contribute in one field, not locally, maybe uh, globally and or other countries and so on. So aggravation is that, think about that in our lab we have a division group another group is that they work on cow that if you have a big farming then uh, there are not much farmers to cultivate not much farmers to look after the plants so how can you do automatically how can you judge automatically see the growth of the plants this kind of things number two i mentioned about cow the cow purpose is that if you have 1000 cows and in a farm and it produces lots of milk but suddenly the production is low because some of the diseases come and when it comes that it it appears that 10 percent of the cows they have the disease and automatically the production is low lowering and a disease is increasing but there are not much farmers to look after or early detection is not possible but again walking pattern gait recognition if you make a simple system with cameras that cows normally enter a door, exit a door. If you see that the walking pattern of the cow is not natural, like Khoraya Khoraya Hattese or something like that, then you can track the cow and check its I mean, well-being and uh, do it better. So these kind of things are going on as well and so on. So these are very important. Deep learning related, lots of works are there and uh, I have no idea because I'm not good at math, unfortunately, uh, but you can explore and you must learn mathematics and statistics in a um, smarter way as much as possible if you want to work on uh, good projects uh, on any areas, okay? So, and blockchains and, and so on. Smart cameras, computational cameras, uh, this is another one, that vision for all seasons. I didn't see it before, bad weather and nighttime. Yes, it is important because normally we do visions, human activity or tracking or car movement or object detection in normal weather. But if it is foggy, what will happen? If it is raining, then can I see even when I drive and the weather is foggy or it's a extreme wind or uh, raining, then it is extremely boring and risky driving. So definitely it has a problem. So instead of, so if you are doing a research on normal situation, normal, lovely weather, just ship the research topic and make a data set on bad weather or nighttime or evening time or darker or winter season and then see how the uh, same algorithm, how good or bad it is performing and how to improve and so on. So this is also possible and there are no big data sets. So here you can contribute and from developing countries you can work as well. Another nice work is that uh, we always look at the bright sides. Uh, really? 
I don't know. Uh, if we see the Facebook, we see that lots of dark sides. I mean, people just complain and comment and dark sides, but everything has good and bad points. In the computer vision, what are the dark sides? Challenges and opportunities we can create in terms of privacy and security from the dark side. So this is important that we have security issues, privacy issues, because video is real. If you take video and many cases for patients and elderly people, they don't like video cameras inside their home. Okay, so that the privacy is not uh, broken. Uh, so on that case, can we do something different? For example, in our lab, we are working on another project and one of my students, Masood, he uh, was part of that last year, that elderly people support system we want to make that if I live alone in my home, then uh, I have some cameras or some sensors by which you monitor everything so that if I have any problem, you can help me, something like that, okay? It can be done different ways. Initially, doctors and the companies say no camera because video is disturbing. But then we tried with different, different, and then finally we come to uh, some kind of negotiations that, okay, we will use the depth image and a skeleton image, even though depth and a skeleton are not 100%, uh, I mean, privacy proven, but it's still better than the RGB image and so on. So there are different ways we can see and there, I, I didn't see details, but you can see the workshop and see the papers and their discussions and <clears throat> find some research areas. Augmented human <clears throat> difficult and um, AI city challenge and other this is uh, vision missed cognition. We know that cognition means that understanding uh, images uh, based on intention, causalities, functionality and physics and so on. And mutual benefits of cognition and vision. Cognition is very important and embedded vision is another important area. Uh, I'm finishing quickly because I find that I already uh, considered lots of time than my plan, uh, then uh, different kinds of challenges. Explainable a AI, this is going on. We know that AI, especially uh, deep learning is not explainable uh, till now, but uh, researches are going on and definitely for that domain, it, uh, you must have good mathematics and so that you can dig into the re rationalities, you can find uh, the reasons. Uh, uh, so if you want to work, this is another area. Another area is that uh, which you can do from developing countries as a perception beyond the visible visible spectrum. Think about that other domains like underwater, which I mentioned at the beginning, IR, satellite. Some people are working on remote sensing, of course, and radiation imaging. And think about the blind people that whether, I mean, other spectrum information can be suitable for, I mean, the, who has a visible problem, visibility problem, or fully blind will be difficult, but maybe something else or something else, something like that. And women in computer vision is another one and uh, computer vision after five years. Uh, so these are the few things. Aerial images, remote sensing, UAVs, computational photography and uh, face and uh, gesture recognition. We know that there is a big conference going on for many years, automatic face and gesture recognition. In short, they said face and gesture. Every two years it's uh, organized. So you can look into that as well. <laughs> With that, I would like to mention that there are some top ranked conferences related to computer vision and imaging and AI, you should look into those conferences. At least look into the workshops, see the titles, see the paper. Sometimes some of these are free, especially during the COVID time, these are free. Engage your time to learn from state of the art so that your thinking can be broader and you can try something bigger. You never know how good you can produce. Because if you are younger than me, then definitely there are lots of scopes, okay? I put myself uh, from this challenge. <laughs> and TC PAMI, IJCV, Pattern Recognition, they are the top journals. Now, no idea, sorry, no data, no difficult or challenging data, you need to create artificially. And then compare with state-of-the-art methods so that your method can be considered as a good one. If you make a new data set, make sure that you try with different experimental settings. And of course, if you make a new data set, nobody tried. So, uh, so why don't you try with 10 different kinds of, uh, I mean, methods? 
existing good methods and see that uh, how difficult your data set is. If your data set is too trivial, very easy to recognize, then nobody will try on that. It's not a challenging one because people like to have challenges and to explore. Now, I would like to finish with a few points for young researchers that select a topic where you can work. Introduce excellent data sets with proper ethical clearance. Healthcare applications are important and smaller data sets are possible to make. Don't jump easily on products until you can confirm that it is good with lots of experimentations and so on. Knowledge-based efforts are important, not whimsical uh, to make any quick decision. It's especially true for the policymakers in developing countries and fund authorities because sometimes they said, okay, uh, I mean, uh, you fly an UAV or make a small robot and they say that, okay, take money uh, they, because it's very fancy, but those fancy things are not true research, okay? Find genuine things. I mean, explore areas where nobody tried. You try something new. So um, new area, generate new areas. This way we can contribute better. Uh, um, uh, but, but we need midterm and long-term knowledge-based realistic plans, definitely. Don't keep doing easy things always. Most of the young researchers, they do like that. I know that it is because of our supervisors' uh, failure to guide them properly. Don't run for publications only because if you have poor publications, no value. If you have one, then stop. Next one must be published in top journals, but not top, at least much better than the current one, okay? And don't look into me or my generation who failed to perform uh, smartly, okay? Look into the top people in the top domain so that you can have a good competitions in your mind. Think and find a solution, uh, but create a new knowledge. And uh, I must say that uh, uh, need to know what are the best works so far and must work the hardest. Spend money on research. If your university do not give, uh, doesn't give then, I mean, uh, collect it from relatives and so on, or parents if they have and spend money for education, I mean, education and research. And with that, I say that deep learning becomes mainly uh, the main only option for large data sets. Application specific methods and data sets are needed. And if you look into healthcare or elderly support, then in some real life applications, you can go for smaller data sets and learn on smaller, uh, I mean, uh, computation capacity. And we need to work more. With that, I invite you all to the 10th ICIV, 5th IVPR, and 3rd ABC conference uh, in 2021. These two will be in Japan, and ABC will be in Bangkok uh, in uh, uh, 2021. And uh, the next talk of this series will be uh, delivered by Professor Sozo Inoue. Uh, I mean, in this month, he, I'm, th I'm thankful to him that he has already four keynote speeches in different conferences and organizations, but he is very nice and kind and good friend of mine. And he attended the first ICIV and this year and the uh, two years before he was the main man for this conference. So, and he's the general chair of the ABC activity and behavior computing. So please, make this date 23rd october friday 8 p.m japan time bangladesh time uh, 5 p.m uh, 23rd october so he will talk on very interesting areas and uh, it will be very very useful and some of you already know him because uh, you attended and some of you already participated the recent ubcom uh, conferences uh, uh, co-located challenges uh, and also abc conference co-located challenges uh, in japan with that, I'd like to thank uh, my partners for helping me throughout this uh, period. And uh, I thank here. So I wish you all safe and strong and uh, let's discuss. Thank you so much. So if anyone has any question or if you share your research work that you are doing like this, we can just discuss uh, a bit more on other topics.